Thank you, Vijay. Delegates uh, in the ITAC Bridge 2014. Before I really sort of share with you some of my comments on what the global opportunities are and how we can really leverage on that, I'd really like to take this opportunity to compliment ITAC and particularly Mr. Lakshminarayan for the outstanding progress you've made in enhancing the competency levels of faculty, which is so such an important part of the IT industry. And certainly both ITAC, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry have really set uh, a benchmark on what could be done across the country. So I certainly think Lakshmi and the ITAC team deserve a big applause uh, for the wonderful job being done here. Uh, I think many times creating that infrastructure is so very important. Uh, and rightly so, I think this time the theme of this conference is leadership and how do you really drive academic excellence. Uh, I think Vijay rightly pointed out to the possible questions which could be there in the minds of your students, which is a big broad question. Is the story of the Indian IT industry over? Because many times, I think, thankfully, with so much of media and press which has come, I think there's also a lot of what you could call eye-catching media reports which need to be written. And unfortunately, some of this eye-catching media report tend to be more populous in nature. So you do get this headline story saying, is the story of the Indian IT industry over? So what I'd really like to do is to share with you what is it I see as an opportunity ahead in the future. And as faculty, what is it which are some of the enabling conditions which you need to instill in your colleges and share with you some of the examples which I have seen where really people have leveraged innovation in India to really create global businesses. So, first about the industry itself, if you just look at the technology industry, it's a very large industry. It's a $1.5 trillion industry growing over the last several years, uh, at least in single digits or high single digit numbers. Uh, of which the Indian IT industry has really just captured 100 billion of it, which is really the offshore part of the technology spend. So if you really look at the headroom which is available in terms of growth, I think there's a substantive sort of headroom. I know Chennai is the auto capital, but still, even if you look at the global auto industry and compare it with the technology industry, both in terms of growth and size, Clearly, you will see that the technology industry is a far more attractive industry, which is really the message I think you need to spread to your students. But the key difference is that what sort of drove the growth of the industry, if at a certain stage, 30, 40 years back, mainframe adoption drove the growth, and then there was the personal computers, then came client server, and then the internet boom. I think what is going to drive the growth of the industry is going to be very different segments. Uh, I think there is great opportunity with internet and mobility really becoming a huge aspect which can drive growth. Uh, and India is clearly a great market because there's no other country which has such a size of mobile users, 600 million mobile users, uh, substantive number, close to one third of them our smartphone users, which really presents a market which you can really tap into. So internet and mobile is going to be a big opportunity. Social mobility as well as analytics is another big area which is going to drive new growth. Creating software products is another big opportunity. Just for India alone, uh, at NASCOM we anticipate by 2020, the software products industry could be an 80 to 100 billion dollar industry. And you could really leverage the talent and the capability existing in India to really tap onto that opportunity. So my first sort of submission is that I think the industry is large, there's enough headroom, and new sort of opportunities like internet and mobile, software products, uh, or engineering in India are really going to be the new opportunities which are going to drive growth. Now, if the market size is large and if there are opportunities, 
what is it we need to do to really leverage that opportunity? I really think there are two things which as faculty you need to focus on and I know one of which was your theme last year is really the whole idea of entrepreneurship and the idea to start a business uh, should get instilled in your students. Uh, I think the scenario has changed for the positive in the last several years even in India. Today I think parents do not just want their students to get out of engineering college and take a job with a Yahoo or PayPal or an Intel. But if the student has a great idea and he wants to start an enterprise of his own, I think they're far more open. I think the second good social context which is built is I think if the person fails in that venture, I think people are willing to accept failures. So, so I think it's a great time for students to look at not just jobs out of the college, but entrepreneurship as an opportunity for them. Clearly, I think we'll share a very interesting example at NASCOM, we took this initiative and started sort of propagating this and in a state like Kerala, I think we experimented this and the number of student entrepreneurs who come out of engineering colleges in Kerala today are far many than any other state. So it is a possible aspiration which you can certainly instill. Beyond the idea of becoming entrepreneurs, what I think you need to teach your students is to really apply the learning which they talk about in the context of improvement, which is really innovation. I think many times people tend to use the learning just to get an outcome which could be a job, but I think beyond the job they need to see how they can really apply that learning to continuously improve things because that's really where new opportunities and new business creation really happens. Uh, so really to enable capturing a big part of this opportunity, I think entrepreneurship and innovation should really become the two basic building blocks on which we really try and leverage the opportunity. With this sort of background, I'd really like to share with you one or two examples because I think if the whole opportunity is so large, how do we really try and capture a good part of it in the next eight to 10 years. So I think many times in the technology business, we have really looked ourselves as an industry which really serves the Western world. I think here you can really flip that over. I think there are enough of local problems in India which can be solved either through technology or through engineering knowledge which people have. And once you sort of solve a local problem in India, I think you can really take that solution onto a global scale. Uh, so I'm really talking of an idea where people use the knowledge which they've gained at your institutions to solve a local problem and then use that experience to take it global. I'd really like to share three examples of this, uh, of startups which are real in the context of India. I talked about software products. I think you can talk of numerous examples of today, entrepreneurs who built products for India and clearly are taking it global. I'm, there are a number of them, so I'm not going to talk about specifics. But an area like healthcare is a very interesting space because I think India requires affordable healthcare. And clearly, we have number of examples of companies uh, which have built affordable healthcare for India they have proven it and now they're taking the same technology to a global context. Uh, I can talk in terms of one company in Bangalore called Forest Health, uh, which started with an intention of building a device to sort of use to find out people in rural areas who are affected by cataract or glaucoma. Because the imported equipment used to cost about 40 lakhs and these people came in from the healthcare segment, decided to or make an affordable healthcare device uh, which could then be taken to rural places as a portable device and camps done there to try and find out cataract and glaucoma at an early stage because blindness, 80% of rural blindness can be solved if it's identified at the right time. So this startup has been functional for the last five years. Uh, they're shipping out the device at one-tenth the cost of what the imported equipment used to be. They've already touched close to about 200,000 people. And 
of which about almost 150, 160,000 people who could have potentially become blind have been saved because of intervention at the right time. And today, they're taking that product onto a global scale. So clearly there are enough of very interesting examples by which you can build for solving a local social problem and you can really take that technology onto a global scale. There are similar examples in the alternate energy space, be it solar or waste management, where there are startups which are building both products and services to solve local problems. Uh, and clearly their vision is to take that at least to other developing countries and hopefully tomorrow to the global world. Uh, and in the space of mobility, again, there are enough of examples, uh, including this mobility, which I knew, built a simple application, which I'm sure being in Chennai, you would appreciate that because I know in Chennai people talk about auto and the pseudo in the auto meter. So this is a simple application on the mobile where once you sit and put in where you want to go from place A to place B, it gives you the fare in terms of that. They built that simple application and today they built a number of other mobility applications which they're taking global. So I think from a conceptual framework, I think it's possible to build technology or other solutions to solve local societal problems, make a big impact in India and certainly take it global. I think that's really the opportunity. That's what will help us capture a significant part of the $1.5 trillion market. So I'm certainly very excited that there's such a great opportunity and clearly institutions like ICTAC will play a key role in really enabling our younger generation not to just think in terms of being a part of the technology staff of Google or Intel, but saying, why should I not create my enterprise? Why should I not be an employer rather than an employee? And why should I not be a part of solving the larger societal issues in India and use that as a platform to create a global business? I think that's the excitement in this transition. And I'm sure all of you will play a key role in this. Thank you so much for the opportunity.